Hello and welcome to the Oxford Clay Pottery Podcast. I'm Catherine Tomlinson and I founded Oxford Clay, an eco-conscious pottery company. So on this podcast, we're going to be talking about all things pottery related, often with an eco-conscious twist, and I can't wait to share it with you. Let's go. Hi and welcome back to the Oxford Clay Pottery Podcast. I'm Catherine and today I'm really excited to talk to you about five weird things, five of the weirdest things I've ever made a pottery glaze from. So this comes from the concept that you can actually make um, a pottery glaze from any plant um, if you turn it into an ash. So if you're interested to know more about like plant ash glazing or like, you know, where to begin or, you know, some kind of full directions from beginning to end about how to make a plant ash glaze, um, you can read more about it in uh, the book Pottery Glazing with Plant Ash, 60 plant based glazes from one simple recipe. Um, which is available on the Oxford Clay website and also on Amazon as well. But there's also um, a video course on the Oxford Clay website if you wanted to you kind of like see, you know, watch how to make a glaze from plant ash. So the idea is that you can actually make a glaze from any plant ash. So anything, any plant that you can burn into an ash can make a pottery glaze. Now, I'm not saying that they're all like the most attractive glazes. Some of them are more attractive than others. Some of them are absolutely beautiful. And some of them, you know, uh, you think maybe, maybe not for me, I don't know. <laughs> maybe for somebody, uh, but maybe like, no, I want one that's a bit shinier or a bit smoother or a bit more, you know, uh, got like more colors in it or, you know, uh, less matte or whatever. So, um, yeah, they make a huge array of different textures, colours, um, surfaces, uh, looks to them. So um, let's go through five of the uh, weirdest ones. But before I start, I'll just let you know that the recipe that I use to make all of these glazes um, is 40 parts uh, Cornish stone, Cornwall stone, 20 parts quartz powdered rock, and um, which is available from pottery suppliers, and then 40 parts um, plant ash, and then water was added on top. So generally, um, in terms of when I made the glaze, um, so I would um, make it a little bit thicker than I would normally make a glaze. Um, quite often ash glazes, um, they, they work better if they're a little bit thicker. Um, but, and I would always sieve the ash as well. Before I weighed it out, I would sieve it twice. So I would sieve it once just to kind of get the big bits out. And then I would sieve it again with a finer grade sieve, maybe like, you know, for a baking, like a I use a flour sieve for baking and that seems to give like, you know, let the ash particles through, but also um, also keep it uh, like um, take out any kind of big bits of grit and stuff that you don't want in there. And when you're dealing with powders in glaze making, you always want to make sure that you've got an FFP3 face mask as well. So you need to wear one of those whenever you're working with any fine powders in glaze making or you're working with any plant ash, you, know, you don't want to be breathing in those powders. So it's really important to say that first in terms of like safety. Okay, so let's get on to the glazes. Um, okay, the first glaze is actually made with banana skins. Um, now this glaze is kind of an interesting glaze. It crazed a lot. Um, it had um, some kind of uh, little tiny black speckles, uh, probably from the trace um, metals in the banana skin. And where it was thicker on the pot, it's kind of gone into like a kind of milky type colour. So it's kind of like a white, transparent, milky type glaze, uh, but it's very crazed and it's kind of matte. matte. It's not, wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's a shiny glaze, but it's not, um, it's not a very rough textured glaze. Um, yeah, so you can make a glaze out of banana skins. Um, it's, um, it, I wouldn't say it's like the most attractive glaze and it does craze terribly, but yeah, that is absolutely, um, 
you can make a glaze out of banana skins. So to make this glaze, I effectively, I just took banana skins that I'd like, you know, I'd eaten the banana and I spent a long time like collecting them, all the bananas I'd eaten over time. And I dried them for quite a long time um, until they were kind of brown and crispy. And once I knew that they were like fully, fully dried, I then um, burned them um, just in a kind of fire pit, which I got from the, the hardware store. So I just burned them in a fire pit in the garden. And um, yeah, so just to say, you've got to be super careful that you don't breathe in the smoke when you're burning plants. Some of them are toxic. So just be like really, really careful. If you are deciding to like, you know, make a glaze from burning plants, you just need to make sure you just don't breathe in any of the smoke. Um, Okay, so let's move on to the next glaze. The next glaze uh, is actually made from blanket weed. So blanket weed is actually, it's like a kind of pond algae. Um, and the way, how I made this glaze was I um, scooped it out of a pond that had loads of like algae blanket weed in. I left the blanket weed on the side of the pond because that's what you're meant to do for like all the animals, like going back into the pond. Um, I left it out for like a couple of days to let the animals kind of go back in the water. And then I dried it and it went into this kind of like, you know, crispy, <laughs> kind of <laughs> crispy substance. And then I burned it and it actually, the smoke that it made was really horrible. <laughs> and the glaze that it's made is like, okay, it's kind of, um, okay, so again, it's not a shiny glaze. It's kind of like a, you know, semi-matte, semi-shiny glaze. Um, it's got kind of like brown speckles, but then where it's thick on the pot, it's kind of gone into a kind of... Um, greeny type colour. So I think there is potential. If that glaze was very thick, you could probably get a nice kind of transparent green glaze out of it. Um, yeah, so not bad. Blanket weed, not bad. <laughs> okay, so the next one is um, watermelon skin. Um, and again, just like in the case of banana skin, I um, ate some watermelon, I dried the skin, spent quite a long time on drying the skins because the skins were very wet and kind of leathery and it was kind of quite, it took a long time to dry them out and then I burned them and got left with um, watermelon skin ash which I then made into a glaze which is actually quite similar to banana skin glaze. So the only thing I'd say about watermelon skin is it seems to have less, um, there's less speckles in this. So it seems to have like hardly any trace, uh, you know, any iron or trace, you know, other trace metals in at all. Um, again, it's like a kind of, um, it's like a kind of icy white kind of transparent type glaze, um, which has crazed a lot around the sides. So, um, yeah, you know, it's okay. It's not like my favourite glaze, but, um, it, you know, if you wanted to make a glaze out of watermelon skin, it's quite a lot of work. I would say like maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe there's easier plants to make a glaze out of, but, um, but yeah, there's potential there. Um, okay. So, um, okay. So this, this is really cool. Actually, I really like this glaze. The, the fourth weirdest thing I've made a glaze out of is tamarind skins. And um, in the UK, you can buy tamarinds in like boxes um, of just like um, tamarind fruit. And in the inside, the inside is like that lovely kind of sticky fruit. And the outside is like a kind of woody material. Um, and what I did was I ate some tamarinds, <laughs> peeled them, and then I kept the wood, sort of the woody shell from the tamarinds. And, um, and then I burned the woody shell. And this glaze is actually, it's actually beautiful. It's very shiny. Where it's thick on the pot, it's actually come out a kind of, um, kind of like a white colour. Um, so it's a bit like when you have um, a hardwood ash, actually, um, a hardwood ash glaze. It looks very similar. It's extremely, yeah, very shiny, um, kind of this like lovely bluey white colour where it's thick. Um, a, a few speckles running through it, but not really. So it's mostly kind of like a transparent glaze um, with the potential for it to be like bluey white where it's like very thick. So yeah, tamarind skins um, make a lovely glaze. <laughs> so if you had loads and loads of tamarind skins, if you ate loads of tamarinds or, you know, you had a source of tamarind skin, that is, um, that is the tamarind fruit skin. That is something that, you know, would be available to you. It's kind of, it does make a really lovely glaze. Um, okay, and then like the fifth and final glaze was actually um, 
was actually made from tea bags. Um, so these tea bags were just, you know, from making cups of tea. Um, so they're the paper bags. And I dried like a whole heap of tea bags, paper bags, um, paper tea bags. And yeah, so I dried them really, really well. And then I burned, like I burned them. And um, so just to say like powders don't really burn very well. So I did actually try and burn um, coffee grounds for that book to, when I was doing the research. And I just couldn't get the coffee grounds to burn. I really couldn't. But with tea bags, because there's like quite a lot of... Um, like uh, paper in the bag, um, they seem to burn a lot better. So I was actually able to burn tea bags and they've made a kind of, um, kind of creamy, very light brown kind of coloured glaze, which is kind of, um, the surface of it is really interesting. It's like kind of almost like wrinkly. So it's not, it's not, I wouldn't say it's very, I wouldn't say it's like a highly shiny glaze, but it's, it's a kind of semi-matte, kind of wrinkly, um, slightly wrinkly glaze with lots and lots of kind of black brown speckles running through it. So you can imagine a kind of very light coloured brown glaze, almost like a coffee coloured glaze. That's the glaze that tea bags made. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, again, like, you know, you might want that for a pot, like a kind of, you know, that kind of surface, that kind of slightly wrinkly surface. It would be great if you were, you know, maybe doing a sculpture of like an amphibian or something. You can have like an amphibian skin um, on there <laughs> and it's still quite shiny, which is quite nice. So, um, so yeah, so that those are the five weirdest things I've made um, a glaze from so far, I'd like to add. So I'm just constantly testing like different plants um, over time. And I found some really beautiful glazes, I have to say, just from plants. The plants are incredible uh, to make pottery glazes from. And they make, you know, like I said at the beginning, a huge range of colours. There's so much potential for, you know, incredible, you to make an incredible glaze um, from plant ashes. So yeah, if you're interested to know more, there's that book and course on the Oxford Clay website. Um, but like the recipe at the beginning, you can use that recipe as well. All those uh, materials are available from uh, pottery suppliers, um, apart from the plant ash. So the plant ash, you have to make yourself and process it by sieving, as we talked about. Um, yeah, so I hope that you found this episode interesting. Um, and um, I'm really looking forward to seeing you on the next episode. Um, so see you next week and happy potting. So if you liked that and you're interested in learning more about pottery, eco-conscious pottery, tools and techniques for potters, there's so much for you on the Oxford Clay website. There's blogs, ebooks, e-courses, video courses, and I can't wait to see you there. So the website is www.oxfordclay.co.uk. Mm -hmm.